these articles here on the study, I anticipated people will say, well, what about John 12, 32 to 34? How, I'm, how often have you heard when you share your faith, well, what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? You know, they, they had this bobbly little head. They're not going to take one passage at a time according to the context it offers in that passage, like normative rules and language, context, and logic, and follow it. If there's a contradiction, then throw out your Bible. But don't just go, what about this? What about that? But Okay, I'm going to answer. What about all mankind is drawn, also drawn? You hear that? All mankind is also drawn to God in a number of other ways. What's one of the other ways? John 12, 32 to 34. All men throughout the ages will be drawn by Christ as an example, as a result of him being lifted up on the cross. But in this case, this is a different case. Not all will respond. So obviously in John chapter 6, it's different where all that are drawn will believe. In this case, all, the, all men are all drawn as a result of Christ being lifted up on the cross. But in this case, not all will respond. This is evidently not the same drawing as the Father's drawing of those who will live, who will come to Jesus Christ. So we have the Son of God lifted up in his humanity on the cross to die for the sins of all mankind. And, also the, uh, and that's the Father's drawing. And the other case is Jesus Christ on the cross himself in his humanity will draw only those elect, okay? only those elect throughout their lives, the fact that he died for their sins, and those who are drawn will be persuaded to believe. Now this John 12, 32, here's how it reads. And I, Jesus, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. His lip being lifted up from the earth. That's on the cross or is it to heaven? But he was saying this to indicate the kind of death. There you go. Some people don't get it because they don't read the next verse. But he was saying this to indicate the kind of death by which he was to die. If somebody, people would only read the whole passage, but they want to cherry pick and then re-edit it what, what, to their own uh, end. So John 12, 33 says, but he was saying this to indicate the kind of death by which he was to die. That's not resurrected up to the earth. That's being raised up from the earth on the cross. The crowd then answer, answered him, we have heard out of the law that the Christ is to remain forever. And how can you say, the Son of Man must be lifted up, referring to himself, who is this Son of Man? So they understand the Son of Man because they know enough in the, in the, uh, the book. But they, they don't identify it with him, nor believe. Here in this passage in John chapter 12, it is evident that Jesus said that he will draw all men, Greek pantas, all, everyone who ever lived, to him with a view of his death on the cross for the sins of the whole world. We have those verses, John 3, 14, 18, 1 John 2, 2. But the result is not stipulated that those who are drawn to Christ, having been lifted up on the cross, will inevitably believe in him for eternal life. This is evidently a different drawing than in John 6, 44, in which all those who are drawn will inevitably all believe. Very, very similar, but not the same. Similarity does not prove identity. That's one of the rules of logic. Now, I got the sunlight on my camera, I guess. Move it over here a little bit. John 6.44 Jesus said, No one is able to come to me if the Father who sent me may not draw him, and I will raise him up in the last day. Now if you read those two John 12, John 6 passages and compared there is a slight difference, so they're different, similar, but not identical. Notice that those who are drawn by the Father will be lifted up in the last day to eternal life. Hence, this cannot be the universal drawing of all mankind to Christ when he was lifted up on the cross, for all mankind will not be raised up in the last day to eternal, eternal life. Reading thoroughly, language, context, and logic. So the message of John 12, 32 is different. It indicates that all men will make, be made cognizant of the fact that Christ died on the cross for them. They don't will not treat that with the, the, the fact that they believe in it. Some will have their consciences pricked. Most will have their hearts hardened and not respond. None will be saved except those whom the Father draws thereafter. There's two drawings then. This drawing on the cross, yes, you make a decision. Do you believe this or not? No. Now the Father is going to draw them to the risen Christ, uh, Jesus Christ, dying on the cross for them, those that are drawn, specifically the election, those, 
they are true to believe to, to a man, a different drawing than the universal drawing of all men that will not result in all men being raised up the last day to eternal life. For example, let's take one person, Judas Iscariot, who was constantly with the Lord, was drawn to Jesus Christ, especially after he was crucified, directly after Judas betrayed him, as evidenced by his guilt, remorse, and suicide. Yet he never once believed in him. He was called the son of perdition, in case you wanted to have absolute proof of that. Son of perdition means the son, characterized by the fact that he was never going to believe and would go to hell. Furthermore, the nation of Israel was constantly drawn to trust in a coming Messiah to repent unto faith in him. Yet she consistently failed, except for a remnant who did believe and was preserved throughout the ages. Romans 11, 1 to 5, also Luke 10 and Matthew 11. Jesus said that the guilt of those in Chorazin, Chorazin and Bethsaida would be greater than that of those from ancient Tyre and Sidon because they had rejected greater light. They were right there. Can you imagine being there with Jesus Christ, looking at the miracles, listening to his words, and yet greater light than the ancient uh, Tyre and Sidon uh, cities. So they were going to be condemned all the more for uh, that. Jesus in the, in, indicted the whole generation of Jews of his time for rejecting him. The whole generation, one greater than Solomon, one greater than Solomon and Jonah. Well, of course, there's always going to be a remnant. All men indeed are drawn to Christ and him crucified, and all men have available to them the full benefit of what he did on the cross. But scripture indicates that few men will respond to this universal drawing of ma all mankind. Matthew 7, 13 to 14. I think that's the narrow path, is it? Matthew 7, 13 to 14. I'm going to keep on reading until that opens up. <clears throat> Second point here. Let's see, do I have it open up yet? Matthew 7, 13 to 14. Unlocking books. This thing gets, gets slower and slower. I don't know if it's the computer or the application. In the meantime, point two, John 16, 8 to 11. All men are drawn by the Holy Spirit to conviction of sin and judgment and the need for righteousness, but few respond, implying that all men are indeed capable of trusting in Christ for eternal life, but they largely will not believe in him. Matthew seven thirteen to 14. All right, let's take a look at Matthew seven thirteen to 14. You ever heard of slow as molasses? Well, John 16, 8. Young's literal translation. Jesus said, and having come he, the Holy Spirit, will convict the world of concerning sin and concerning righteousness, and concerning judgment. And then the next verse, concerning sin, because they do not believe in him, in me, and concerning righteousness, because I, Jesus said, go to the Father, and you no longer see me, and concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged. That sounds like the drawing, the universal drawing of all men, but not all will believe. It's not the drawing of the God the Father to select, elect individuals to believe. Let's see if I can get, there we go, okay. Contrary, Matthew 7, 13 to 14. Surprised I remember that. NASB. Which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appointed. Is that what I was looking for? Yeah. So, it shows that the natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit, it requires something of the Holy Spirit to convict one of sin and judgment. And all these uh, certain elect are, are done, uh, given that. And they're the ones that truly believe. And I know that I'm one of the elect because I believe. If scripture is right, I have not found an error in it. 
Note that as a result of Christ's defeat of and judgment condemnation of the ruler of this world, the devil, and due to the world's continued unbelief in Jesus following his ascension, Jesus Christ promised that the Holy Spirit would come to convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. This implies that men can be convicted of sin, their need for righteousness, and that there indeed is judgment to come. Fix that typo. Man is thus held accountable for his unbelief in Jesus Christ, especially as to his message of convicting men of sin, the need for righteousness, and a coming judgment. All of this implying that all men are indeed capable of trusting in Christ for salvation despite their sinful condition, but largely will not do so. All men will not do so. Part of that message, of course, is Christ died for your sins. Oh, I don't want to... I don't need anybody to die for my sins. I'm good enough. So on. That's many of the responses. Take a look at Romans 3, 1, 18 to 23. All mankind is drawn by creation and the order in which it exists to believe in the Creator. So man is without excuse. Few, but few will choose to respond. Remember that. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in righteousness. In unrighteousness. See, that's the vast majority of mankind. Because that which is what known about God is evident within them. For God made it evident to them. It's within them. Now, if you're sharing your faith with them, do the best you can. If they show the fact that they reject it, dust off your shoes, show them your heels. For since the creation of the world is his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen. I say this all the time. I said it to an atheist in front of my building. He says, oh, you're the one that teaches the Bible and spoke, speaks about the Bible all the time. Well, I'm an atheist. I have no business doing that. I said, well, you know who I'm looking at? He looked at me kind of strange. I'm looking at the most complex creation in the, in the universe. Your human body. You possess it. It had to be designed. There has to be some example of the creator out there. And you're it. You're walking around within your own body. Boy, did he get mad. For since the creation of the world... His invisible attributes, of which is your human body, begin with that. His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood through what has been made, so that they are without excuse. Who said he is marvelously made? David. You can't deny this guy now is going to think about every time he thinks about his human body, how miraculous it is that it could not have been evolved from less complex beings to this more complex. We spoke about that too. Newton's law of... of uh, <clears throat> it does, talks about things are diminishing, not increasing in complexity. Notice that the creation of the world gives clear and plain evidence of who God is. Hence, creation draws all mankind to God. So man is without excuse, but few will respond. Acts 17, number 4. The order in which the creation exists, the time set for man, and the exact places where they should live give clear evidence of what who of who God is, so that all men may be drawn to their Creator and seek Him, but few will. So much the more the lesson of Christ crucified being lifted up, the Son of Man. So, the God who, the God who made the world and all things in it, since He is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is He being served by human hands, as though he, were, he needed anything, since he himself gives to all people life and breath and all things. The Creator is out there, and he makes himself very evident. People say, oh, I've never heard of this God before. Just look around you. Come to the conclusion, you maybe you don't, won't know his name, but at least you'll see somebody created this. It didn't just fall apart, fall into perfect place, rather, uh, from something less complex. Verse 8, 17, 26 in Acts, And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth. Adam, having determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation, that they would seek God if perhaps they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each of us. Just reflect what we said in, read in Romans and in John 6. Notice that the order in which creation exists, especially God's determination of the times set for man and the exact places where they should live, give clear evidence of who God is, so that all may, men may be drawn to their Creator and seek Him. 
they don't seek him, you're not going to get more information. If you block it out, you won't get more information. This implies that man can understand who God is and seek him.